Sup, gang? Welcome back to Fab with Matt. We are back after a uh, bit of a gap. A, a small hiatus, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, nothing happened. No, no nothing at all. Nobody forgot to turn the mics on at all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> didn't record a two-hour draft video. Uh, nothing happened. Uh, Anyway, you know, <laughs> uh, distance makes the heart grow fonder. Yes, I think yeah, that's exactly. Same. So, unfortunately, we did we did record a Rosetta draft video uh, on the release weekend for Rosetta, uh, and uh, went through that. But unfortunately, after after we'd, we'd finished it and given it to Aaron for uh, for editing, and then I flew off overseas that next day. Uh, Aaron came back and said, hey, you guys forgot to turn the mics on. <laughs> so we had no sound. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, professional production. Thank you very much. Um, but hey, we're back and that's all that matters. Um, it, it's been a little, a few weeks now since the Rosetta release. Yeah. We're, we're planning to make it up to them on this yeah, video. Yeah, though. We're going exactly. to do, do a double deck tech this video. Ooh. So we're going to give you like a ton of information um, two full-on deck techs mm -hmm. of decks that we've been winning events with, or I've been coming second at events with, and my teammates have been winning events with, yeah. but, you know, same thing. <laughs> yeah, you know, Auckland seemed uh, too strong. Now yeah. I just can't win. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, we will be bringing that to you, and at some time in the future, I, I, I will put up some draft videos uh, yeah. online just to make it up to, to, to all our loyal fans. Well, we, we could still take that draft video and voice over it yeah. if, if we want to we and, and put that up as well, but I don't yeah. know if you got a lot better at drafting since Rosetta I, Weekend, because I, I, I did. So. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. Well, the fact yeah. that we, um, we, we made that video right before the Calling Sydney, and neither of us uh, did very well at the calling sentence. Yeah, but that's because it was sealed, not draft. <laughs> yeah, well, I had Germinate and uh, I went 5 3, so oh I think God. I'm not very good at the game. That's, yeah, that's heartbreaking. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, since, since the last video, you, you've traveled around a bit, you know. Did the calling Sydney, then you went over to to um, Europe. Yeah, yeah, I was over at Europe. Um, so I played, I played calling Leon. Yeah. So I did uh, Tampa, Sydney, Leon. <laughs> Man of many monies. Um, but and you did quite well. Uh, you yeah. Almost, almost there. Almost made top eight of Leon. Uh, so yeah, got got top sixteen at that one. Mm -hmm. uh, playing Enigma, Reality Refractor, Enigma. Um, and I loved the deck. I think I think the deck was great. I think I had a couple of really unfortunate spots, and you know that's fab. And yeah, and, uh, yeah lost some real, real close games. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. But we will be bringing that deck tech today. Yes, so yeah, we're I'm gonna excited. do a deck tech. So I've been I've been playing that deck ever since Leon. Yeah, I played it at, at Leon to top sixteen. I then played it at a, at a ProQuest in Germany where mm -hmm. I came second. I lost the finals unfortunately, <laughs> and then I played it at a ProQuest in New Zealand where I also lost the finals. <sighs> Uh, but my teammate Nick Butcher, he won his progress mm. with it, went completely undefeated throughout the whole thing. Uh, Dilks over in Canada, he won his progress with it. Mm. Uh, Evan, your nat uh, USA national champ, he top forward his progress with it. So, so our combined record with the deck is like almost 90% win. Mm, <laughs> it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. Well, what I'm also hearing is just the good players in their events. <laughs> and, uh, that, yeah, that makes sense too. Yeah, 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 that's that's also a thing. But I do think I do think Enigma is very very mm -hmm. good right now, and I think uh, yeah, I think this deck is is real strong. Yeah, I love the tweet by the way of someone posting a photo. I was just scrolling Twitter as he you with the play mat, and I, I sorry I didn't know who who it was um who ended up winning the pro quest that yeah. you went to in Germany, and Twitter yeah. was like, did not expect Matt Rogers to turn, <laughs> yeah, to turn up to my local pro quest? <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're really um, taking on Brody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just random appearance. Oh, yeah. Love that. Um, but you you haven't dabbled in the new heroes? You know? No, uh, like I mean, I played I played like a little bit of Aurora and stuff mm -hmm. uh, on Talishar and like testing with teammates and stuff, but. To be completely honest with you, I, d I don't feel the new heroes, eh? I'm not feeling it. I've never been a wizard player. Yeah. I've never enjoyed wizard. And, like, I've never... I've not been a huge Runeblade player mm. either. I played Viscerai back in the day when it was, like, you know, way back before, uh, uh, like, after Starvo meta when it was, like, Lightning mm. Briar and stuff. And it was, like, a full setup Sonata, you know, yeah. uh, Blood Chief 
viscera, uh, oh. like you know. <laughs> Rest in pieces. Yeah. yeah, more like a control deck. I've never, I've never been a big Rune Blade fan. Okay, okay. Uh, it's just unfortunate. It's like the two classes I don't play yeah. in this set. Oh, I feel, I think you're missing out, Matt. Yeah, you reckon? Yeah, because yeah, okay. I've been playing a fair bit of the new heroes. When yeah. I say the new heroes, I mean one of them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've been playing Florian, who you keep calling a guardian. <laughs> Earth guardian. It's so good. Well, I mean, now that Yarl's been spoiled we have a real earth guardian but in the meantime you know florian's the best replacement i feel for any guardian homeless fans out there yeah hey, to be fair i also have played a fair amount of aurora like, okay you've played quite a lot of aurora yeah yeah, yeah. I, I played a decent amount of aurora but again like aggressive decks just aren't really my yeah. style yeah. like it, it's definitely good really really good deck and like i was winning a bunch with it but I just, I want to be in my comfort zone. Yeah, you know? exactly. I keep looking at my like blocking stats. And I'm like, yeah. Why, <laughs> yeah, why do I only always have two card hands? And I've got like 32 health. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, I've probably played this deck wrong. <laughs> yeah, so it wasn't for me. But we, I will, uh, we will also be bringing you uh, a Florian deck tech today, which um, the first week when Matt Rogers was away, you know, managed to go 8 0 in a pro quest. Undefeated. Uh, Undefeated. Take it out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second week, Matt Rogers came back and uh, <laughs> uh, someone beat me in the top eight. I don't know how that happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to say, I'm, just, I'm, still, I'm still salty. That game. Uh, oh, my, this, my deck is so good against Illusionist Enigma. Illusionist is good against Guardian. No, though, right? but this, this <laughs> Guardian is so good into Illusionist. Oh. And then Matt Rogers just has pot armor, you know. <laughs> I just draw my hands. I'm like, all right then. Uh, block. Block. And I'm like, this is not all my deck does. Yeah, anyway. I was like attacking you with a Mirago and you kept blocking. I was like, I'm sure this isn't how it's supposed to be, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, for context, the previous Enigma I played, I won on like 30 health. <laughs> and it was the game finished in about like six turns. And yeah, I was well. like, oh, and of course Matt Rogers comes back and he just shuffles, <laughs> shuffles my deck. <laughs> and I could, oh. It's all right. We've got another ProQuest this weekend. We'll make it up. Yeah. yeah. You're going to take this one out? Yeah. Yeah. yeah hopefully. Right. Um, but yeah, that's what that's the content we're bringing you today. Yeah. Uh, double deck tech. Double deck tech. Yeah. Um, anything to say before we get, get into it? Uh, yeah. I think just Rosetta in general yeah. um, has been another hit. Yeah. Um, I think after Heavy Hitters was a really good hit. Mm -hmm. Uh, Part of Misfile was a really good hit. We were kind of expecting, like, maybe we'll do a, do, do a core set again. Yeah. But I think Rosetta's been a pretty good hit. Yeah. I think it's done mostly positive things to the meta, even if I'm not playing the heroes. Um, and I think the limited format is pretty interesting. Um, it's it's very different mm -hmm. to like every other limited format, which is awesome. They took a bit of a risk there, mm -hmm. and I think it's paid off because yeah. I think it's it's playing out really well. Yeah, I agree. And I think um, the team at LSS, you know, in terms of designing limited sets and sets in general, it just keeps yeah. getting better and better yeah. and better. Of course, there's things that we all want, you know, to improve on every set, but I've never picked. Feel, for the last three or four sets, I've always picked up the cards and just been like, man, I just want to play Fab, you know? Yeah. I yeah, just want yeah. to draft. And then everyone's like, do you have no life? I'm like, Fab it's is true, my life. It's true, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so great job, um, Team Al Alice S. Um, wow. Now everyone's going to call me a... Call me a names. Simp. Yeah, a simp. <laughs> but no, genuinely, I've been yeah, really enjoying yeah, I agree. it. And like, you know, world championships coming up, end of the month, I'm just so... Like, I'm stressed. Yeah. But like, super hyped. Yeah, just just don't just don't put the pressure on yourself. <laughs> you Listen, don't need to stress. Listen, we, we talk about this in our sound muted video. But yeah. I'm really stressed about worlds because originally I we, I was going to worlds. I'm like, it's Japan. I'm going to have fun. I don't care. I'm going to drop out, play the battle harder, you know, farm these side events, which I never get to do because yeah. usually you know running a. Oh, I get to play the battle hard, but I never get to line up for the, the artists and, you know, meet James White, even though we meet, we meet him, like, every second day here. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, get the free stuff. Because um, usually, like, making a, you know, a good run at, yeah. at a major, and you're, like, really concentrated. But this time, I was like, I'm going to go and have fun, do these yeah. side events, you know, make EV doing these side events. And then they're like, oh, by the way, you're playing in the, um, the New team. Zealand World <laughs> Team Cup, and you actually have to do well. I'm like... Yeah, you have to do well, Dennis. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> my, my results. <laughs> Matt's uh, <laughs> results, Dan results rely on me as well. I'm like, I, I didn't sign up for we this. We should really start testing that format, right, by the way, in Living Legends? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 thought, we thought it was broken um, well, and it was for yeah, like a whole week was, yeah. like, oh we had this big secret deck or whatever well, that <laughs> everyone it knew wasn't about. a secret deck but I'm pretty sure we had our plan our plan yeah. was play the broken deck and play two decks targeting the broken yeah, deck yeah 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 <laughs> well for the first week when I saw the deck list I was like wow 
yeah. wow, like this <laughs> format is just this. And then, yeah, now we have to play real heroes that don't break the game. But anyway, <laughs> exciting stuff, stressful stuff. But hey, that's a lot part of um competitive play, I competitive guess. Competitive card games, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but other than that, Matt, should we? Yeah, let's let's move text? on to the deck text. So we'll show you, uh, yeah, an, a, an Enigma deck first, mm-hmm. and then a Florian deck, and we'll talk talk through, yeah, kind of the deck choices, uh, card choices, things that that you're looking for, mm-hmm. what matchups are good and bad and stuff and some of the choices and and hopefully uh give you guys plenty of information yeah nice let's get into it all right all right this is our reality refractor enigma um so this is the list that i've been playing uh for leon and proquest seasons uh with you know small cuts and changes here here and there uh but yeah mostly the, these are the cards uh that i'm playing and this is what i'm likely to play uh next next week's proquest as well um and uh yeah so here's sort of the the gist you've got obviously your defensive cards here um, you got the 12 reacts, the two oasis, uh, and the three bodies um, as as sort of defensive things. Obviously, you got cards that can be aggressive and defensive, like waning vengeance, um, restless coalescence, uh, astral etchings. This is building up shields to attack with, um, and then you got a lot of blues and a few attack actions uh, and some wax inspectors, uh, mainly for the mirror and against wizard. Um, so yeah, the, the general gist is that you're trying to make, like this deck doesn't care about keeping a whole lot of spectral shields in play. So what, what I really like about this version versus other, um, Enigma decks is the way they try to attack you is to clear your board, but you don't need a board in this deck. You only need one, 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 uh, aura to attack with. Um, because Reality Refractor, it doesn't give go again, it just makes one aura really big. So generally you're letting your board die a lot and you just make one aura and then and then keep whacking them with it, uh, taking massive chunks out of their life total every turn. Um, so uh, yeah, the kind of the best, best ways to do that, Spectral Manifestations is crazy. This is, uh, so because Enigma makes your first Spectral Shield cost one less to attack, Reality Refractor does it for one resource on a Spectral Shield. So um, with two cards, you can pitch a blue, play Spectral Manifestations, you make a Spectral Shield with three plus ones, and then you get to attack for eight with it for one resource. So um, yeah, basically what you wanna do is you wanna pitch, play Spectral Manifestations, whack them for eight, pass, pass turn, arsenal in a defense reaction or some sort of defensive card. Uh, a lot of the time block them out, and then just keep whacking them for eight every turn. Um, you can block all five cards, just use one tunic counter and attack them for eight again. Um, and what you find is you quite often get at least two attacks out of a spectral manifestation shield. So you're getting, you know, 16 points of attack value plus one point of, of um, ward uh, out, of, out of that and, and a pitch card. So the value is huge. <laughs> like the, the deck really outvalues any sort of grindy, uh, uh, grindy game. And uh, yeah, you're pretty much just trying to keep your life total high, trying to stay alive, block things um, so that you can still do the crazy enigma thing of like Maragai. So uh, your Maragai when you have Reality Refractor is nine. Um, So it comes in with four counters and it's base five, so it attacks for nine as well. Uh, But with Maragai, you actually have to pitch a card each turn. You can't just do it off a tunic counter as well. but yeah, and then you know you're doing a lot of the the normal things as well. You've got really good end game with levels and stuff, um, and then um, yeah, you've got most of the normal blues. I play Vengeful Apparition, which a lot of people don't play, but mainly because it's really good with Essence of Ancestry Body. Uh, this card has been uh, yeah incredible for me. I'm I'm I, I'm surprised that not more people are playing it. It's um, Oftentimes versus the aggro decks, it prevents four from the attack and it wards two. So for one card, you're preventing six damage, um, which is way, way, way above rate. Um, and then uh, obviously Astral Etchings is re- really good in this deck. If you make a Spectral Shield and you Astral Etchings it, it's attacking for eight off Reality Refractor. And then if you can keep it in play, obviously you get eight out of it next turn. 
Um, some of the blues might look a little bit odd. Um, I play one Spears of Serenity uh, uh, because I just don't want to play three of this card because of the new matchup. I have to board it out. I have to board Spears and Levels out. So I play two, uh, two Prowler and one Spears so that then I, I can just board out the four cards because the Spectral is still uh, uh, good in the new matchup, but Spears is, is, is a real problem for me. So, um, yeah. Uh, in the mirror, I still play Cosmo, um, and uh, I play Cosmo against other wizards as well, um, and and uh, yeah, and against people that might be overly prepared for a reality refractor or kind of know how to play against what I'm doing, um, but. Basically, you have both options. So sometimes in the same matchups, I'll play Reality Refractor, and then next time in the same matchup, I'll play Cosmo. You can play either side of the strategy, um, depending on what your opponent's trying to do. Um, so you do get a lot of options. Uh, but yeah, most of the time it's Reality Refractor into the aggro matchups because you get to just block them and outvalue them throughout the game. Um, you know, when you're still smacking them for five to eight damage most turns as well as blocking them, all of a sudden they're going to find themselves on like 12 life while you're on 30 and then you can, uh, you can turn the corner pretty easily there and just take their turns and, and throw out damage that then they have to start blocking. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the deck. Um, I bought out some number of cheese uh, uh, in a lot of matchups where I do want to block quite a lot. Um, and uh, I often bought out a Maragai as well uh, against super aggro matchups. Um, uh, the Wax Inspector is mostly just for Wizard in the Mirror. Um, so I, I, I still have to transform into a Cosmo deck uh, in the Mirror. Um, but yeah, uh, Carmen Gesture is an incredible arm piece. I wouldn't play any other arm piece now. Um, so yeah, it's just very good at being able to, um, in, the, in, the, in the late game, even if you don't need Arcane Barrier in the late game, you can set up a line of uh, Carmen Gesture, Maragai, and then Astro Etchings it, uh, start attacking them for, yeah, just crazy, crazy amounts of damage. Um, so... Yeah, I think that's pretty much everything there. Um, but if you have any other questions, feel free to, to post them on the video um, and I'll answer them as best I can. Uh, but yeah, we'll go over to some uh, Earth Guardian slash uh, Runeblade. So this is the Florian deck. Now, um, Florian, of course, is a, on paper, he's a Earth Runeblade, but we play him a bit like an Earth Guardian. Um, so the only weapon you'll notice is a Reaping Blade. Uh, there have been some variations of um, Florian playing things like the Scepter of Pain um, and utilizing uh, Channel the Millennium Tree and stuff like that. But for this version of Florian, it is more of a um, mid-range deck as much as we don't believe mid-range is real in Fab. So equipment up here, um, we have three chest pieces. Um, AB2, the broken earth chest and tunic, the <laughs> broken... Earth legs and null rune, as well as for the headpiece, we're playing plume and face purgatory. For uh, plume comes in for some some of Florian's harder matchups, such as Enigma, uh, Kano, and stuff like that. But face purgatory is the broken you had. This side, um, all the way down here, all the blues. So these are effectively main board. They're always in uh, once in a while. Side out. E strikes or swarmings, but effectively these cards are in for every single matchup, and the sideboard is here. You'll notice uh, defense reactions uh, and an aggressive package, as well as kind of you know summers form and weakest link, which are tech cards for certain matchups. Um, and of course, being a guardian, we play pummels. That's why we love this deck. So the great thing about Florian is you are able to be very very defensive, um, while also uh, on the flip side, uh, being able to turn the switch, uh, flip the switch and effectively kill your opponent super quickly. And once your hero power is online, there's a lot of split damage. Um, so Reaping Blade effectively becomes uh, Titan's Fist for five, uh, except, you, except it's harder to block. Um, you'll notice in the main board, we play Channel Mount Heroic. Uh, so this is a way for this deck to effectively go wide and go super tall at the same time. Um, a lot of the time, because of the super high earth count, this channel will stay on the board for at least three, even four turns, which means you're getting a minimum of 12 value from it, which is 
effectively broken. Um, Earth Blues wise, some people, <laughs> when I play these cards against them, they're like, they've never seen this card, where does it come from? So we play a couple of the commons from, um, from the Terra uh, Armory deck, I think it's called. No, the Terra First, First Strike deck. Um, so you have to buy two copies of it to get a play set, uh, which is Flourish and Canopy Shelter. Um, both just kind of toolbox cards. Now Canopy Shelter, I, I think, is effectively broken in Florian because late game, this card blocks for two and gives you two might, which turns your CNC into eight power, uh, your Phalanx into 10 power, etc., etc. In early game against aggro decks, you just block with it and suddenly your um, disruptive attacks such as uh, Command and Conquer and Weakest Link are coming in for a break point. Um, we play the red big red attacks as well, as well as the um, mega broken new earth attacks falling and plow under. Uh, so pretty much game plan with this deck into most matchups is to block effectively and, um, and send uh, good damage. So you can block your whole hand, keep card, and use your grasp of the Arknight, which is not here. Now that, <laughs> now that we've started the video, use your grasp of the Arknight. Here we go, <laughs> Florian has arms. Uh, make a rune chant, uh, swing effectively four damage. Um, or block your whole hand, be happy to sit there and play a defensive game until, the, uh, until your opponents run out of threats and you're just hitting them for CNC, uh, Fouling of the Crown, boom, 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 boom. Um, or against certain matchups such as Enigma, where you need to go, uh, you need to control the board as well as kill them quickly. Uh, you're effectively waiting, not waiting, you're effectively trying to set up big turns of Channel Mount Heroic while controlling the board with uh, things like Summers Fall, which is where the Plume of Evergrowth also comes in. Um, this also really helps keep up channels, um, over, uh, channels up for an extra turn because it's an easy way to get uh, Earth cards into your pitch zone. And grinding matchups such as the Mirror or into Guardian, um, I'm sure anyone who's played Rosetta Limited will be familiar with Germinate. Uh, this card pretty much says if you if you drag out this game and allow me to set up a pitch stack, uh, you lose. So, yeah. Uh, and the, that's the thing I love about this hero um, thus far is you can have these game plans. The, uh, you can play like a Guardian where you set up a really ultra defensive uh, game plan and, and, and in the late game have an inev inevitable uh, um, win condition. Or you can just say, oh, you want to set up against me, I'm going to kill you now. So that's pretty much it. Um, they're having some changes between week one and two already, uh, and as well as going forward, uh, such as, well, one of the weaknesses of the deck we found was, um, unlike a Guardian that plays 30 to 39, or sometimes even 40 blues, the deck, the deck can clump, clump a lot because of all these reds, and they all cost, you know, two and three. Um, so the red count was really um, a problem, because sometimes you'd get full tempo off a turn like, you go Swarm and Gloom up Veil into Command and Conquer, your opponent passes their turn, and you just draw a hand of all reds, and you can't really do anything, or you draw a Room Blade hand where you'd have things like Canopy Shelter, a Blue Summer's Fall, and nothing else to do with it. Um, so to fix the consistency issue, it just we've changed a few things, such as um, these Autumn's Touches have become yellow, um, uh, to essentially fix the cost curve along with Tunic that becomes a blue, obviously, but also pays for the two cost attacks, um, going down some numbers of the, the um, I guess, the aggressive cards, and also potentially changing out an X amount of uh, defense reactions, depending on the meta, depending on how many wizards there are, et cetera, et cetera. Um, some notable cards I want to uh, mention. Seeds of Tomorrow, this card, originally I really hated it because I didn't understand how it was good. Um, but after playing a while and changing, essentially adapting the play style of this hero to kind of either always keep an arsenal or play in a way that you know where your Seeds of Tomorrow are, uh, slash if you draw, in a way that if you draw a Seeds of Tomorrow, you're able to cover a really wide defensive turn. Um, has really kind of changed the game. Originally I was on one, then I went up to two, and then went up to three. Um, that's how good I think the card is, especially against decks like Aurora, who are trying to push turns um, with things like Burn Up Shock or push their uh, Channel Lightning Valley turns. This just helps with break points, and obviously into, uh, as a quote-unquote guardian, usually we have a pretty 
uh, miserable wizard matchup, this just means we are no longer automatically losing, especially against Kano if we're playing Plume of Evergrowth. You've got one of these in the graveyard. As long as you're keeping a blue in hand and um, your plume up and an arsenal, this means you can't instantly die. And of course, um, we've got Nolan Boots, uh, sorry, AB3 as well. So uh, not an auto loss like the Guardians. But yeah, you get to kill, do all the cool things. Um, and also, yeah, cards like Weakest Link, just your toolbox cards. Um, I think in the next meta coming in, you'd be playing um, something like Erase Face over this card. But depending on what's uh, what's popular in, your, in the tournament that you're playing in, a lot of these cards can change around. And that's a great thing about this hero. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's Florian. A um, little bit of a shout out to uh, Matt W because he requested a shout out <laughs> um, for the deck list. Um, but yeah, really fun hero. Any questions, please feel free to ask. <laughs> Welcome back. <laughs> You see, we've had a great time doing these dub, this double deck tech video. Yeah, that yeah. was a double deck tech. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, no, I hope you guys found that, um, I guess, insightful to at least our, our, our takes on these two heroes. Yeah. Because uh, definitely for Enigma and Florian as well, being a new hero, we've seen like so many different builds. And I guess just kind of giving you our approach on what we think about them. I think it's quite cool. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I think it was really interesting. I think some of your card choices, specifically some of the blues, mm. um, aren't as kind of uh, played in, in a lot of Florian decks mm -hmm. and that, and completely understand your justifications. They sound sound really good. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, even even that uh, that block card that put <laughs> like two might tokens in against me in the top eight, I was like, yeah, wow, yeah. damn, that is so good here. Yeah. Uh, context, uh, I block with two of them on the very last turn, made four might tokens. And if it wasn't exactly astro etchings, <laughs> I think I get the game there because I'll be attacking for two and seven the next turn. Yeah, and, yeah. it would have been pretty good. Mm. But, but hey... Um, yeah, but I think it's just so interesting, right? Like Fab now having this huge card pool. Yeah. Uh, the, no matter what deck you're building, it's like, like I'm always picking up a card and reading it for the first time. It feels like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm doing a lot of that as well. Yeah, so. especially in these um, little niche armory decks. You know, you just don't know, don't know what's in there. That's going to be a hidden gem, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I also find like even just within these heroes, there's so many different strategies mm -hmm. now. You know, like um, in Enigma, for example, like we see people doing the super control -y, like count your blessings thing. We see people do the like, yeah, like really aggressive, like astro etchings, lots of auras, like, you know, uh, I, I try to whack you. And then I, there's also like uh, Reality Refractor, just eight, eight, <laughs> eight, go block, you know, in the yeah. middle. So I feel like there's, there's, you know, quite aggressive illusionist strategies. There's very controlling illusionist strategies, mm -hmm. and there's super mid range illusionist strategies. Yeah. So, and I'm finding that more and more with all of the other heroes as well. Mm -hmm. So I think as Fab's developed and the card pool's gotten a lot bigger, you you can't just sit down from your opponent, and have them reveal their hero, and know exactly what what their game plan is going to be. Exactly, anymore. exactly. And that's what I'm like super excited for as well, going to worlds because you're gonna, you know, all these secret teams are gonna. Have play a hero that we all think or are familiar with, that we all think we're familiar with, and then sit down and just like you, you're like, what? Yeah, I, I don't even know the hero could be played this way. Um, like it reminds me of you know Charles Dunn bringing the big big briar, the briar yeah. Yeah. yeah, or like even when uh, in World San Jose when we were playing Oldham, but with Mage Master Boots, and, yeah, and, um, and like every time I played a mirror, the opponent would just like what what's going on <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> same like it was yeah yeah so um no that'd be super super exciting um but what's your deck you, you mentioned you're almost like guaranteed bring this well at least bring the hero to yeah the yeah, yeah. Right? I'm, I'm i'm gonna play enigma at worlds for mm. sure i'm gonna play play this i think um like, yeah, I mean, being tested in a bunch of other things, but really this deck's just my comfort zone. Yeah. I'm not going to be, yeah, super, super secretive or super thing or like, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not choosing between like three different decks or anything like that at that yeah. this time. I think I'm almost certainly going to play Enigma. Wow. Um, but 
please don't hate me if I don't know if I like swap last minute or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, Classic know, Matt Rogers. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure like I'm super comfortable in this here. I really wanted to play it last Pro Tour. Mm -hmm. Um and and Zen was just way too hard. I just couldn't beat Zen last format. Um, but yeah, as soon as Enigma came out, I foiled up the whole deck. Yeah. You know, I brought all of the foils. I brought, you know, uh, extended art, Mirage guys, everything like that. I love Enigma. I really, mm. really love this deck. Mm -hmm. um, so if I've got a chance to play it, I'm going to. Yeah, yeah. And it makes sense. We were talking, you know, as we were, we took a break that um, you're like, this is the closest deck to old him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like with Reality Refractor, it's just like smack with a hammer, smack with a hammer, yeah. block a bunch of stuff, smack with a hammer. Yeah. Like <laughs> that's so, that's so funny because yeah, that's it. This is the closest deck to hold him and I said Flory is the closest thing to hold him that's our argument at the moment yeah. what's hold him yeah and that's all that's 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 the main thing that goes into our deck building choices yeah. what's more like hold him yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but no that's exciting you're not even considering like dash IO which everyone is super hype on. No, like I thought about it uh, uh, at the start, but then I was like, oh, I really don't have enough time to learn the deck. Mm. And like, it's not like the dash decks that I used to play, right? Like the dash decks that I used to play were like mid-range, you know, mid-range style, mm. whereas dash IO is a very much a set-up aggressive deck. Mm -hmm. So it's not my play style, and I would have to like, you know, play 50 games with it or whatever, which I really don't have time to do. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I have to test for Living Legend as well. So I don't have a huge amount of CC mm. testing time because um, I want to get a bunch of drafts in and I want to test some LL. So it's way better for me personally mm -hmm. just to lock in a deck that's super familiar with my play style and that I really enjoy. And then I can like focus a little bit more on the other formats. Yeah. And there's yeah. that advantage now where what like two weeks, two and a bit weeks out from Worlds at yeah. the moment. Um, of locking early, right? Yeah, I um, think so. You just play a familiar hero. You it, you play the matchups that you think uh, you know an unfavored yeah. a, a bunch of times. Um, get your I guess your tech cards in there if you need to, and just be fam more familiar in that matchup than your opponent is into you. And that's kind of like that's that's a huge advantage than just them potentially playing the best deck but not being very good at it. Right? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I think I think ultimately, like I think what a lot of people do when they're testing for an event is like they lose to a, f a couple of matchups and they're like well i can't beat this matchup i can't figure it out so like i probably can't play this deck mm. i think the the biggest breakthrough for me lately has just been like all right i can't i can't beat this matchup or i'm way behind in this matchup is what it is it's going to be five to ten percent of the field like i'm just going to move on and make yeah. sure that that, that like you know, 70% of the field is even to good matchups mm -hmm. and then I'm happy. Yeah, no, and that, that's that's still something I'm coming to like grips with as yeah. well. Because, you know, playing, <laughs> having played Oldham where in a particular meta was just the best deck and you yeah. can beat everyone. Yeah. And and now, of course, with so many heroes, so many different play styles, that's not possible. You have to give up some matchups, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it, that it's going to come down to who makes the best, you know, medical and like yeah, I guess how 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 the gym parents land. <laughs> exactly, that's the main thing, right? You sit down yeah. round one, you're like, I'm against the Arachne. <laughs> okay, we'll take it. Um, but no, that's 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 great that you're locked. Um, I think for me, uh, I don't know if I'll be playing Florian uh, yeah. Worlds just because the with. Um, kind of the big meta shake-up that this yeah, week Dashio Theo is coming, coming out. out changes things a lot yeah, yeah. I, I i think i'm sitting on the fence between three different heroes it is going to florian is one of them yeah um i think victor is going to be good <laughs> um you know more aggro decks victor more good i think yeah, that's yeah. pretty victor definitely definitely is a big winner out of this meta game shake-up yeah i think your dashio matchup has got to still be amazing yeah right no matter no matter how you shake it up um, because you can do both sides of the plan. They can't set up on you, and you, and you can can just fatigue them and block them yeah, out as well. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. So you, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you think the meta is going to be? What What do you think oh, the world's God. meta is actually going to end up as? All right. I think there's going to be the a group of like fifteen percent of like those unshaken disillusionist fools yeah um who <laughs> yeah. just like no matter how many aggro decks are there it doesn't it, matter if yeah. dash io comes out it doesn't matter if you can't yeah. beat the aggro decks they're i'm like, gonna play it exactly anyway. that, that, I'm a, that's that's my like, that's you. Yeah. like yeah. oh i just said no yeah. i just have to play dense blue mist now and i'm yeah. suddenly favored you're like okay yeah. brother the delusionist the, the delusionist <laughs> yeah. yeah. um there's going to be kale mccreeth and bravo yeah. <laughs> no, i'm just kidding um and i think there's going to be a bunch of people who are either going to be playing 
um, Dash IO, uh, Aurora, Visceral, like one of the kind of premier yeah. aggro decks. So, so you think Dash IO, Viscerai, and Aurora are the three best aggro decks? I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I agree with that. And do you think they'll represent as much as like thirty percent of the field between them? Oh, I think in total, hundred percent will. Yeah, hundred percent will represent thirty percent. Yeah, hundred percent will represent thirty percent. Anyway, yeah, it works. yeah. And then you've got the flip side of all those people who are like, I'm gonna hate on. I think they'll they'll think they'll think that those three heroes represent much higher than thirty percent. Mm, they'll think so it's I've like fifty percent exactly. Yeah. They'll yeah. just bring like I don't know, full fatigue something. Yeah. Count your blessings, bravo. Yeah. or something like that you know <laughs> um yeah and like news and so it's like it's that little rock paper scissors kind yeah. of format again yeah um but it, it will be interesting and it, i mean that's where i'm sitting with the deck like victor right um if those kind of the news and the enigmas they have to cater a lot more for the aggro decks then they my matchups get worse, better yeah. into them yeah. and at the same time i'm targeting those aggro decks as well yeah and then the aggro decks suddenly they're you know <laughs> they always adapt they yeah exactly always do. like you know the team's testing them up to the pro tour what i find every single pro tour is aggro decks change quite a lot and yeah. they're really good at adapting yeah yeah, yeah. and i think that that's one re- like I, I aurora is also on my consideration as well okay um just because yeah it's it's a deck that can play well into an aggro mirror yeah um and you can build it in a way where like if you sit down from a victor you can still beat them yeah which is really really interesting <laughs> that's um, a big plus for an aggro deck yeah, yeah. <laughs> um so yeah those are like my kind of top three choices but i'm always the last minute bring pack all three decks and yeah yeah, yeah. turn Decide up on the day the yeah literally at the um what do you call it the banquet we're walking yeah. around like <laughs> like sh- shaking nervously uh-huh. and then probably locking in Victor. <laughs> yeah, see, this, this is why you lock in two weeks before you just feel relaxed. Yeah, I've, I, I've made my bed, I'm asleep. <laughs> <laughs> well, now that you've done this deck tick, I might have to go uh, do some reality refracting oh, myself. Right. Bring you bring you back to reality. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I snapped to reality. Um, yeah, no, uh, like the way that you've described the deck, you know, it, it is it's very attractive to me. It the, is very the, old. <laughs> the only downside is. I would have to like admit that you were right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're off. You're yeah. Or yeah. like, oh god, Nick Butcher and Matt Rogers are right about something. I like, don't know if I can come to come to that. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if your ego can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what stops me from winning worlds. Big ego. Um, no, um, yeah. So leading up to worlds, we've talked about Dick. You, you're locked, and yeah. you're gonna do a lot of living legend preparation because you're the yeah, best teammate heaps. ever <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no i am i am gonna do a lot of a lot like next week i'm really gonna focus on the living yeah legends, yeah so. same yeah. Yeah. good good i'm glad glad we had this agreement <laughs> so, um, what else are you like uh preparing like how else are you um approaching worlds yeah i mean like just just generally just trying to get games and really where where i have spare time i'm mm-hmm. um, trying to do a lot of drafts i think this draft format's super deep Uh, talking to nick who's probably drafted the most in the world like he's definitely done well over 100 drafts of this this Mm. format and like he feels like he's still figuring things out yeah so i'm like oh my gosh i've done like you know not even 20 drafts and like you know if you're still figuring things out after 100 it's like oh i have to do so many more drafts to like get get it right this format so but i'm not unhappy about that Mm. i do really enjoy drafting this format Mm. and i think uh yeah I'm, i'm gonna I'm, I'm going to try to enjoy the next 50 drafts or whatever that, oh. that I have to try to do um, uh, in the next two weeks uh, and see if I can figure out as much as I can. Yeah. And interest, like an uh, interesting question, I guess, um, for me to know uh, is how do you know you're like, you've become good at the draft? I guess when you're not drafting very many train wrecks, <laughs> like, like I guess I guess when when you're finding ways to win games that you shouldn't that that you would normally be losing or giving up on or whatever, mm. and like when you get to the end of every draft and you're like, okay, my you know my deck has this this strategy, this is what I'm trying to do, and this is how it should play out, and then it does play out that way. Yeah. So I, I think I think that's that's kind of the biggest thing is you got to make sure that. Yeah, like if you're if you're doing a whole lot of drafts and you get to the end of the draft and you're like, yep, my deck's nutted. This is insane. This is just gonna do this, 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 and they're gonna die, and then you lose, and and you're just like, well, how did that happen? That's at the point where if that's happening a lot, I know that that I haven't figured things out yet. 
you you've perfectly described where I'm at with this oh, draft. Right? I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think the other night I drafted, I think it was like, I think a Cilio? Yeah. Um, and I was like, this deck is, this is the most broken Cilio deck of all time. Yeah. Which is, you know, a, f- a favorite phrase that we say here <laughs> uh, in Auckland drafts. But, and then I just went zero three. Well, I didn't, I didn't play this third game, but I was like, yeah. well, h- how am I losing? I don't understand. And given I've done probably 40, 50 drafts by now as well. Um, yeah, so still a lot to learn. Yeah. I would say if Nick's saying that he is still learning things every draft after 100, like there's, this format's got to be crazy deep. Yeah, yeah. You know? And um, in the last, the previous dev talk where um, James, actually, I don't know if you will watch that, um, but James came on and said uh, something like, there's a particular archetype that no one's discovered yet. And if the pro players, you know, f- f- like, are, l- kind of find out about this um, 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 draft, draft archetype, archetype they go, yeah. and, and I was like, you know, instantly I was like, what is it? <laughs> it's <laughs> in the back of your mind every draft. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm like looking at there. all the cards. I'm trying to draft all the count your blessings. Yeah. Like, I'm <laughs> like, is it this? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, someone solve the mystery, please. Yeah. Like that, like that bomb that he dropped. It like, it's, it's really, um, I think it's, it's, it's just going to be in the back of my mind every single draft. It's, it's just a red herring, man. It's yeah. the same as like escape rooms and stuff. James loves to just put little red herrings in there to screw you. Reckon, you reckon he threw that to <laughs> yeah, us? Yeah, I reckon he did. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, nah, there def- def- definitely could be something. I don't know. Um, I don't feel like I'm doing anything yet that other people aren't doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so if it is out there, I haven't figured it out either. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah, same. I think now I'm just a consistent, like I do a couple of good drafts, I go 2-1, go 3-0 some days, and then go 0-3, yeah. another one. Yeah. And it's like, and like, oh. yeah, but I'm saying about as you've got to really figure this out. And we've got draft yeah. camp this yeah, Sunday, yeah, so I'm excited Sunday for in, that. In person, so that, that'll be good. Yeah. That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Any, anything else um, exciting coming up for you leading up to Worlds? Yeah, I mean, uh, well, for me, uh, we're opening PCG in Japan. Um, so I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. Uh, or I've got a whole lot of PCG staff from all of the offices around the world mm. all flying into Japan to do our like little yearly PCG conference thing okay. and then also doing on, uh, on-site grading or grade, like next day grading at Worlds. So yeah. if people can submit cards uh, at Worlds and pick them up the next day. Oh, graded, so you so. have all your staff going to Japan. You, so. Yeah, yeah, everybody's going to Japan. Oh, I might have to visit <laughs> pcg.com slash jobs. <laughs> <laughs> No, it, it's really cool. Like we did the same at Barcelona. We did the same at the Worlds uh, uh, before that as well in the US. And like it's, um, yeah, I think doing that every year, it's it's a really cool way for all of the off the staff and the different offices to work together um, and sort of learn off each other and stuff and make sure that all of our kind of um, between office consistency is on point yeah yeah um and then uh yeah doing doing the the on-site stuff at worlds people love it Mm -hmm. um we're bringing out a new product as well i saw i was about to say i'm very excited yeah yeah yeah. you're gonna play with some slims oh yeah (laughs) yeah like so they're even slimmer than the current player slaps yes yeah yeah. they're they're like almost half as thin as the player slaps so you can fit so many of them in a deck box like they're just it's (sighs) yeah I am so, so happy with how this product yeah. turned, out, turned out. It is perfect, and honestly. That, it's absolutely perfect. The The slabs aren't flimsy in any way. Mm-hmm. It's still like still yeah nice and hard. It's real thin. You can put a bunch of them in the deck box. The little, there's, you know, uh, a little uh, NFC chip mm-hmm. sticker on the back, which has all the details. So you can just scan that and go to our pop report. It's got all the details there. And then it's got little subgrades for the 9.5s and above there as well. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's perfect for playing with the, the normal player slab. Never quite hit it for me because mm-hmm. I always played with them and I always still found them a little bit clunky. Yeah. Um, and now I think I've, I've hit it perfect. Yeah, I, I, I was gonna say I think you guys really hit the um, what's to say the hit the nail on the head there because yeah. like I have a bunch of player slabs as well. Yeah. Um, you know, biggest supporter of PCG, uh, yeah, of course, right, right here. <laughs> um, and yeah, the two, the, literally the two things that put me off, you know, playing with it all the time was no sub grades on the back yeah. and then it was just a little bit too thick yeah. for the deck boxes and, and i think that's the feedback we got from like the majority of the community yeah. which is why we went back to the drawing board and we're like okay we're gonna find something that that hits home with what people want you know this this player slab was um such a big focus for me and 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 you know a big innovation that i really wanted to, to do perfect so when we 
you know, when we came out with it, it was great. So much better than anything else on mm -hmm. the market. Obviously, first of its kind, but there was still a couple of minor things that didn't quite hit there. And I, I don't think like everybody's the slim's going to work for everybody. Mm. There are, you know, that there are people that still want a metal label that still want stackable yeah. slabs and stuff like that. Um, it's not, you know, we are going to keep the old player slab as well. People will be able to choose which option oh, they have. Oh. Um, but yeah, I do think that this that this really gets there for the people that didn't that the player slab wasn't quite what they were looking yeah. for. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just so funny. Every time there's a world, I don't I don't spend anything on like the vendors. I don't like buy any play mats from the artists because there's just no time. <laughs> like I look at my um, essentially statement at the end of the day, it's just like all gone to PCG. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. Like I live. <laughs> In Auckland, I could bring it to the office. <laughs> yeah. I could like bring it to your house and just be like, please grade these. But I go to Worlds and I'm like, here's like 20 cars <laughs> to grade. And they're like, wait, I'm paying a premium. <laughs> but it's so, so exciting, you know. Yeah, it's it's kind of about, you know, the fact that you were there. It's, some, it's something to take home, right? Like everybody, when they travel and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, most people buy like a... Yeah, some sort of keepsake or something mm -hmm. like that. But if you if you grade a card that was important to you at that event or whatever from that event, then uh, and that's also why we do the world's mm -hmm. label at worlds as well, which is really popular. Yeah, marketing gives... genius, eh? <laughs> 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 no, awesome. That sounds so cool. I'm definitely ex excited to get my hands on some of these little what is it? What do you call them? PGC thins? Yeah, player slap Wait, thins. player slap thins. Yeah. Okay. All right, this isn't a marketing video <laughs> for PCG. Let's, let's, let's. Yeah. Uh, Where's like the scout code? Yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for that. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, so yeah, draft. Basically, if, if you're playing worlds, try to do like 50 of them. It's probably going to help you. It is a lot though. Mm. It's a huge commitment. Mm. So um, if not, just try to do as much as you can and make sure that you feel comfortable with the strategies that you're mm -hmm. drafting, I think. Um, CC, honestly, I, I'm a big advocate of playing what you're comfortable with, mm -hmm. what suits into your play style, and don't get too caught up on not being able to win a certain couple of matchups. Yeah. That, that, that's my biggest takeaway from CC. If there's anything I've learned, that's that's it. Yeah. Um, and then uh, Living Legend, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. <laughs> but yeah. hopefully next week I will. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and I think that's a big, big, like great piece of advice for us, people who are maybe going to their first Worlds, you know, or yeah. first major tournament is it's a long tournament. And yeah. like the first day is eight rounds. So five yeah, CC. Five three, yeah. Like you have to be good at both formats. You even if you go because even if you go five zero and you're CC and you go zero three in your draft, I think you'll make day two. But yeah, um, you're pretty. You're almost out of contention for you know the top top, top placings. Already, yeah. Um, yeah, and as you said, don't get too s stuck on if you can't solve the entire meta. Just do things you're good at. It's a long tournament. There's elements of luck that come in, such yeah. as your pairings, such as how, obviously how you draw your cards. It's a TCG <laughs> at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, but if you just put yourself in the best position, like you're prepared in, in all the all the formats as much as possible, that's like all you can really do, right? Yeah. And have fun. We're in Japan. Yeah, man. yeah, how, yeah. How awesome is that? You, know? <laughs> you say have fun, and we get there, we're all sweaty. Like, yeah. <laughs> I know, it'll be such a great time. Yeah, um, yeah so excited. Cool. All yeah. right. Well, the next video um, that we, we we do will be after Worlds. <laughs> oh, wow. So, Hopefully, <laughs> world champion. Hopefully, world champion. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. No world humility. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, uh, definitely let us know anything in the comments, mm -hmm. any questions mm -hmm. that you have on the decks. Uh, uh, the, the, the deck checks that, that we've showed and for everybody that's playing Worlds good luck and for everybody that's watching enjoy the show yeah we'll see you next time <laughs> yeah <laughs>